Happy Christmas, everybody, and a uh, very happy new year. Uh, hello, I'm Will Franken, and I haven't done a video for the public in quite some time, although if you're a patron at patreon.com stroke Will Franken, you do uh, get uh, a video every Sunday, or something else every Sunday. You get something every Sunday, the Sunday gifts, they're called. Uh, so I'd like to uh, wish especially all my patrons a very happy Christmas. Uh, and uh, all of you, a very happy Christmas, and especially those who have uh, not fallen lockstep, goose step, heel clicking step in line with the government mandates. Uh, because knowing that you're out there, and like me, you have remained maskless, testless, and jabless, uh, it makes a person feel that much less alone in whatever the hell we're living through. But. I do wish uh, everyone a happy Christmas. I wanted to ba basically just make a video because uh, I realized that I haven't put up um, a public video since Selvatico, the comedy album. And um, I, I hadn't even realized Christmas was coming up. You know, I, uh, I've done my Christmas shopping and I'm, you know, the, the missus and I are going to have a great Christmas and all that. But I, as I was working on this album, um, it, it did occur to me, you know, if I had started this a little bit earlier, this follow up. I could have had a Christmas album, and I always love the idea of Christmas albums. Some of you might know, uh, if you go to willfranken.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, there's two Christmas albums from 2006 and 2008, one called Texas Chainsaw Yuletide, the other called Michael Crenford is Not Alone. Uh, and those are some of my um, happiest uh, comedic recording moments, if you'd, if you'd like to revisit those over the holidays. Or just watch It's a Wonderful Life, because I'm going to do that again as well. Uh, whatever your whatever uh, and the one foot in the grave uh, Christmas episodes, whatever uh, tickles your Christmas fancy. But as I was working on it, I think I started work on this follow up, Selvatico Due, which uh, means in uh, English Selvatico Two or Wild Savage Two. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to do a series of comedy albums, just Selvatico, Selvatico Due, Tre, Quattro, because uh, I just love the word. I'm learning Italian, and, and some words I. Some words I like, I find very easy to say, and uh, when I saw the word selvatico, and I learned selvatico, I thought, that's it, I feel very selvatico these days. You know, I'm not, I'm not part of the clean, digital, fall-in-line future, I am, I'm a wild man. Do you like my hair, by the way? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's good and bad, you get the cool long hair, but you also get the horrible tooth pain, you know, because, uh, you know, the dentist wants you to wear a mask. I want you to do something, some take some part in this weird, creepy apparatus, and it's just like, no, I'll, I'll sort it out until I, you know, meet an ethical dentist who's, uh, you know, not afraid to call this bullshit for what it is. Anyway, let's stay positive for Christmas because I did want to just make a short video telling all of you, because uh, I've only done videos for the patrons, as I've said, because um, uh, they, you know, the truth is they come first. You know, they uh, they help make this stuff possible. They help they help make the the audiobook of Paradise Lost possible. They help uh, make made Sylvatico Uno possible. Uh, and they're helping make this comedy album possible, as, as well as numerous other creative activities that I've been involved in, whether that's the songs I've been working on. And, you know, and, and not to mention, you know, uh, if, if you're a comedian and you're uh, not part of not just this, not just the uh, whatever this techno medico system they're putting over the world is but also not part of the uh you, you you've gone past and seen through the culture war bullshit as well uh you know it, it's it's you, you got to do things on your own and it's a beautiful thing you know and i love making things on my own and i always have and uh you know but but uh oh what the heck economically things have been a little weird but it has it's been that way for a lot of people and a lot of people have it uh, worse off uh, than I do obviously a lot of people a lot of brave nurses made some um, made some very important stands and uh, I'm quite disappointed that I I know somebody in California who works uh, in a hospital uh, as an assistant to a, an anesthetist and I talked to him after the vaccines came out and he took the jab because he wanted them to just open things up again. Sounds very much like Jordan Peterson's excuse, doesn't it? I was like, well, just open things up. Why not have a jab, smab? And that's what my friend said to me. And I said, and, and then he goes on to tell me that they, they sent him home for two months with nothing to do. You know, the hospital. <laughs> and, and I said, so there was no work for you to do 
in the hospital for two months and they sent you home with nothing to do when the COVID thing first came out and you took the jab anyway because you wanted them to open things up and I just uh I don't know why did I bring him up I probably shouldn't but I tell you what I'm going to tell you this like last year last Christmas you know there was this feeling that uh you know, we don't have to do this. You know, we can, we, I, I, I can, I can stop people from doing this. So, you know, I can, I can play my part. And this Christmas is a bit different because it's like, okay, obviously there's a great portion of the world that will take politicians' advice over your, your common sense, you know, in, in, in empiricism, uh, arguments from empirical, like just use your eyes. Do you think that they would build six luxury smart homes as soon as the prime minister announces lockdown right next to a care home if there really was something deadly going on or if, there, if it really was like they were saying, but, you know, a year later and uh, what is it now? They're, they're aiming for four shots now. Um, it, it seems like there's a lot of humanity that just doesn't really care you know and I, I think that that was it I was going out for a long time I was saying stupid cowardly stupid cowardly which one is it you know it's got to be one or the other and, and now there's a it, I think there's a third underpinning it, it has to be this foundation of apathy and I certainly got that when I talked to my my friend from California I was like wait wait a second so you didn't know if there was a vi you yourself didn't know if there was a virus or not and they said and they sent you home and that that and you, and you still took it because you because you thought that was the way to open things up. It's just insane. Anyway, so, you know, oh, that's why I brought him up, because I wanted to say, think of those nurses. Think of all the nurses that quit, that were so close to a pension, that quit rather than take, rather than be forced, rather than be, have a gun held to their head and be forced to do this. They, they left. And in leaving, they kept their dignity, their integrity, and who knows what else. So when I hear people, you know, I, like this guy, I don't know why I went off on him. I'm just, I'm thinking about the people. I, I want to specifically say thank you to all the people this Christmas that are staying resolute. Because the thing is, we have made sacrifices. I've made, I've made sacrifices. You know, I, I, uh, I turned down a gig because I had one gig offered to me in two years, one gig offered to me. And on the front of their website, it said, um, this was a couple months ago. And on the front of the website, it said, uh, we rest assured we will follow the latest government guidance about hospitality. If anything happens or whatever. And I, I just emailed the guy and I said, look, there's, there's no, there's no excuse for that. Is the government telling you to put that on the website? Or not, because if they're not, what do you do? And, and it's just if you if you work it down through the only reason I could see that, that they're putting it on the website is they want everybody's money. They want the people who don't believe in this and they want the people who believe in this. And I've heard a lot of people this year s sort of praising people who give lip service to this. They go, oh, it's only lip service. No, they're good people. They're good people. They're just it's just lip service. Yeah, that QR machine out there, that's just lip service. But they're good people. Trust me, they're good people. If they're good people, they need to open their fucking mouth. Because, you know, you're contributing to a, you know, if you got the prime minister calling you nuts, you know, they're all nuts. Vaccine people are all nuts. Anti-vaccine people are nuts. You know, and again, we're not necessarily anti-vaccine. We're just like, we're anti whatever the fuck this is. There's four now? There's four you got to take? Anyway. I want to try to stay positive and think of Christmas things because what basically what happened was I was working on this album and uh, I, I put the Nutcracker in for a certain sequence and then I have somebody reference Christmas blues and I thought boy would if I would have just started this about two months earlier but it had to happen when it happened you know I, I operate by inspiration I'm not a content creator I have to make something make something make something doesn't matter what just say it say it say it and then build up your audience say just I, talk about tea talk about exploding trees anything just talk about every fucking day every fucking second get a twitter account get a whatsapp account this account that account and have it going constantly and then you build up an audience and then if you've got any energy left over you you might make something resembling art i know it's crazy you know it's like saying just just follow the government guidance now follow it now follow it to the letter do all the government guidance and eventually get a, you'll get to a point where you can make fun of the government it doesn't make any sense you know, so I operate by inspiration. I'm not a content creator. I don't want to just make something. So I have to be inspired. And 
I began working on this when I began working on this. And uh, as I put the Nutcracker in, I thought, you know, it would have been nice to have had a Christmas album. Because uh, I always, I, 2006, 2008, I put out Christmas albums. Michael Crenford is not alone in Texas Chainsaw Yuletide, which can be found at willfranken.libsyn.com. And uh, I was very proud of those. And especially Michael Crenford is not alone. I felt, I felt very connected to the great spirit, God, the muse, what have you, on that one. I was in a very dark, I was a very, very that's a very cliche expression, isn't it? I was in a really dark place. I'm sorry I didn't call you for years. I was in a really dark place. Where was I? I was in Folkestone. That's where I was at. I was in a really dark place. Yeah, so it was like the it was like the prisoner. Huh? Do I want my change? Yes, I'll take my change, and I'll change you. Be human. I am not a computer. I am an animal. A human animal. I don't want to give too much away, but I was working on this, and I thought, you know, I probably should, at the very least, make a video for the uh, the wider audience and, and just say that uh, Happy Christmas. I'm gonna be Christmassy because I haven't really thought. I'm sitting right next to the Christmas tree. Hopefully, its lights will, you know. What do you want to see it? You've seen this tree. No, that's not. That's my laundry. But that's the tree. See that big bad boy? That's the tree. That other stuff's my laundry. I saw his laundry over Christmas. I saw Santa washing daddy's clothes in the open. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. There's somebody on a, on a nobility scooter. So the, the, the aristocracy, they don't ride mobility scooters. They ride nobility scooters. It pretty much drives itself. It's a great, there's a great mobility scooter business in town. What the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, I'm going to try to knock these bad boys on the head on New Year's. But I did, I, as I was doing this, I thought, yeah, I'll at least make, make a video. Before Christmas, make a video for everybody. Short. I'm going to have to stop this in 26 minutes and cook my lunch because that's when I have my lunch. I have my lunch every day. My rituals are very important to me so I don't, so, so, so I don't fall through the center the center because society is collapsing. I think it's collapsing. I haven't paid my council tax in uh, close to two months now because I had tried to call about these smart homes and said, why did, why did you not feel it was important to notify residents of this neighborhood after the prime minister told the country that they were going to be locked down and that care home residents specifically uh, were dying in, in uh, such numbers. They were, I don't think, by a virus. But anyway, there's a care home right there. You've, you've heard this story before. The patrons definitely had, have. Um, but you mow down an entire forest that's all protected under you know tree protection order, environmental neighborhood regulations, and you, you mow it all down to build three million pounds of ugly smart home bullshit. Homes by IKEA. And so you call the uh, you call the council, and they say, Mr. Fagan, that is an online form. Yeah, I don't want to do an online form. I, I think I, I'm getting the way this works. This, this, this is your way of keeping reality at bay. I get it. I get it now. There's an, on, an online form. Yeah, but I'm talking to you as a person right now. I'm telling you, motherfuckers, you committed a crime. At the very least, an ethical crime. It's an ethical crime. You might not use these words anymore. You might just say profit. Profit is an ethic. Profit's its own ethic. Just as long as you, you know, get one over the other man, cheat out the other guys and fuck the small businesses and they get the big pigs in. They're lined up with the nepotistic cocksuckers in the, in the, in the, you know, whatever, whatever governmental body is around. That's a bit too arbitrary for me. That's not an ethic. Anyway, so you go to the council and they tell you to do that. Then you call the ombudsman, and the ombudsman says, well, there's an online form, and uh, we don't really deal with that, but there is an online form. So we don't really deal with that, but there's an online form. So if you want to uh, take it as a given that we won't deal with it, or you, or you could do an online form thing and go online, online, yay, online, and, uh, and then we'll ignore that too. 
So then you find out about this thing called the, uh, the the Lawyers Association, this new organization that's starting up. That's that's uh, in Kent County, and it's it's getting started, and it's ready and hungry and young, eager lawyers. And you get them on the phone and say, uh, "Yeah, we we don't really do deal with that with with uh, property and stuff like that." But there is an online form, Citizens Advice Bureau. Same thing. You can go online. And as I get how this works, now what a, what a convenient shield this is. This has been for so many people. Okay, but what what do we do if they come outside and they say, "Burn you bastards, burn"? Uh, tell them there's an online form. They can do it from the convenience of their home. Uh, they can start the revolution as long as it's from home. It's from the safety of their home. You know. So uh, anyway, uh, what what else can an American do if he recalls? You know his own fabled history of his of his land. As you stop paying taxes, you look around. And you, Wait a second! I'm not a luxury person. I'm not a luxury. I actually went to the I went to the cafe uh, that was shut that disappeared like a mirage. That was where, that was. I like to eat there, where, where the women got the tin tomatoes from the Sainsburys next door. Like really simple. I'm not a luxury person. I'm not, a, I'm not a half a million pound investor in new property. By the way, that's another thing that, that a friend of mine from California did. It was such a weird connection. He said, you know when the lockdown first happened out here? I don't know. That had nothing to do. They sent me home from work and I, I went out and I bought a condo in Vegas. So there's a weird connection with property. So you, you knew, here's what you, here's what you didn't know. You didn't know whether or not they were telling the truth about the virus, but you took the jab anyway, because what you knew for certain was that they were purposely fucking with the economy. And that's where your head was at, man. And that's where this council's head was at. And uh, this ain't funny. Anyway, so that's... I also want to say Happy Christmas to... Maybe you're doing the same. Maybe somewhere in this country, somewhere... If you got the equivalent of council tax in Europe, or I forgot what America's was, but uh, if, you're, if you have decided to withdraw your funding as best you can from your local tyrants, then uh, happy Christmas to you. And I suppose I should try to find somewhere that spirit of forgiveness. Uh, it's a fucker, isn't it? See, because last year I was, you know, last year I was, I, I wouldn't say proselytizing. Probably I was proselytizing. I was going out, I was saying, you know, you, you're more than this. You should have self-respect and free will. And isn't it great to have choice? And isn't it great to think for yourself? And now that I've seen, you know, what's happened, it's like, oh my God, I don't know who the fuck I'm dealing with. I was, I was optimistic Johnny Appleseed, you know, last year. Now I'm just, you know, much more, much more cautious, you know, uh, much more. Uh, it, it comes out now like in little um, uh, asides, maybe. And like, here's an example. I was in Sainsbury's the other day and there's a woman that always wears the uh, cute birthday balloon mask, you know, a little, it's always some pastel -y, cute thing isn't this fun we're all little babies now isn't it fun to be a baby as an adult <laughs> and this is after the stories of the number 10 christmas parties were on the front pages and they were doing the same old shtick that's just, it's such a magic trick they did it with dominic cummings as you know dominic cummings didn't follow the lockdown and they they switch it and they go that makes him a hypocrite he doesn't practice what he preaches and it gives the the idiot on the other end of the story reading the story the idiot it gives them the uh, ability to say you know what i may have my faults but at least i'm better than dominic cummings i didn't visit grandmother i let her die on her own i gave her a digital funeral i let my children be vaccinated i took away people's right to travel freely <laughs> But uh, it gives them <clears throat> it gives them a false morality. They get to go. But at least I'm better than Dominic Cummings, because that's not the story. The story is looks like he didn't believe in it. When have you fucking known a politician to ever seriously take? I mean, these days, the past what the past probably since the '80s at least, if not before. When have you ever known a politician, a political leader, to take any risk at all? about anything if he if there was a deadly virus you think he would have fucking broken that come on give me a break use your fucking head man anyway it's a christmas message i want to do a christmas message 
First thing I'll have to light this cigarette. Just like my dad. I always light a cigarette for your Christmas message. You know what dad gave me for Christmas? A carton of cigarettes. He says, smoke up, Johnny. What's that, the breakfast club? That's where my head's at. Oh, yeah. They took away my future, so I, uh, I retreated into my past. There's some of that, to be sure. I find this present world and the direction that it's being steered into so depressing. Yeah, I do retreat into the past. Whether that's Dante or my own. You know, I'm going to go all the way back to the 1200s and then, you know, think about the, think about better times that I had in my past, you know, growing up without personal computers, a landline, four channels and a landline. Yeah, that was it. We had four channels and a landline. You know, we had a tough in our day. You know, I know there are people that had a tougher. I mean, everybody else who came before. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to finish the story. The lady with the birthday balloon mask. I can always tell there's a, that, that, that's the thing with masks, like the, the pastel -y ones and the cute ones. First off, I can't look at somebody in a mask for that long. I have to avert my eyes. You know, so I get the general feel of like, okay, yes, friends, the friends logo in the skyline. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. It's an embarrassment. Yes, maybe I'm snobbish. I don't know. Maybe I'm just sort of <laughs> snobbish. That I still have a head and a heart. Those masks, the, the colorful ones, I think there's always an implied smile underneath. I think that's how they were. Then you got the you got the men, right? Because men have to be different now. You might you might have some men that have read Jordan Peterson. They're like Jordan Peterson. Now they're all rediscovering their man. Yeah, I knew. I always knew I was a man, but I read Jordan Peterson and I knew. Not only was I I was I was a man, I was also a boy before. I've been a male my whole life. So when this, obviously, when this uh, vaccine thing came down and all this, uh, what seemed to me a bit, you know, because I know Jordan Peterson's an expert on creeping authoritarianism. So I went and I revisited my Jordan Peterson and I saw that Jordan Peterson had taken the vaccine because he wanted them to open things up again. And I had to recalibrate my mind uh, because I'm a man. You see, I'm a male and I'm a man, a boy, man, boy, man, man, boy, man, man. And revisiting my Jordan Peterson, I realized that, uh, you know, Jordan Peterson taking the vaccine. He regrets it now. Uh, but uh, he's an expert on creeping authoritarianism. So when I bought my mask, you know what kind of mask I bought? I got little Harley Davidson flames going up on mine. Because I want people to know that I'm a man. That's a real man. So those, I think there's always an implied frown or, you know, I may look like I'm uh, taking up the ass for the government, but don't mess with me, buddy. I'm uh, Harley, Harley all the way. But those other ones are cute. So I go up to, I go up to the lady. I'm, she's right next to the mat, to the newspapers where every cover of the paper, number 10, party, shame, disgrace. How could they have a party? Party. They admit, to, yes, now they're saying it was a party. Party. Boris caught out, caught out having a party. And this is this is the this is kind of how I do it nowadays. I I go up to the counter and I, I say to the lady, "Do you know why they're having a wait? A do you know what those do you know what all those parties at number ten mean?" And I get the response that it seems like everybody who who is following along with this shit has given this response of cocking the head and going, I, I don't know, that's all too much, this is a bit, I don't know, it's just a bit, you know, I don't know, it makes one wonder, oh, it makes one wonder, oh, I don't know. Short-circuited idiots, right? She doesn't know, I don't know. And I said, it means they don't believe in this. <laughs> I don't know why I try. Because it gets you back the next day. And I, t I know I know Sainsbury's is probably making you wear that mask. And maybe that's why everybody's response is, well, I don't know, it all does seem a bit mad. And yet you're doing it. Yet you're doing it. Because I was in there the other day, you know, everybody's in a mask. I will say this, though. I will say that I'm seeing, this year I've seen, because they, re they reintroduced mask bullshit here. And I, I've, I feel like I've been hassled less than I was last year. And I also notice in every shop, there's probably about three or four others that are also not wearing masks. So I, I found that a bit heartening. Um, 
But I was in there the other day and I was looking at all these people in masks. And I went, I went back to my movie theory that um, this um, everybody wants to be an. I, I said, they, I said, what does it feel like? Because I, I have never even put one on to do a joke. I, I find it such a disgusting symbol. I mean, as soon as I said, I know what this is about, and it ain't about health, motherfucker. The mask was just such a disgusting symbol that I won't even put one on my face to mock it. I don't even like doing this with my hands. Like, I, like we, we know, you know. I mean, I'm making this comedy album, and I have so many characters speaking that I know if it was being filmed, they would have to be wearing masks because those, these are the kind of idiots I'm making fun of. And yet, if you do that, you would have, I would have to have the muffled voice, and I don't want that. I want clarity. So it just has to you know, suspend your disbelief and just imagine these dickheads or wearing visors or whatever the fuck uh, the uh, fashion du jour is. But I'm looking around at the... Uh, people in the mask and I just for a second I try to imagine what that feels like to have that on your face to, to get up in the morning and feel like you have to put that on you know and for whatever reason I, you know either you don't want to make Betty your next door neighbor upset at you or you know you don't want to get you know, somebody might point or whatever you know whatever you think un, uh, unmasked people suffer uh, for some reason you get up and you put that thing on what does it feel like to have that on your face What's going through your mind as you're shopping in the background? You're probably thinking about what food you need for sure. You probably, I mean, two years in, you're probably used to it right now. But in the beginning, what did it feel like? I imagine it probably felt like you were in a movie and it was kind of exciting. Wow. And then we were all, we all had to wear masks because there was a virus that weaponized itself. Yeah. And then the best part was, by the way, who are you telling? Because, like, you know, everybody in the world knows this story. You'd have to go to another planet and tell this story. So when Elon Musk sent us here, <laughs> and then what happened? Then what, then they made us all wear masks? Or maybe that'll happen in the afterlife. Maybe maybe that that's what happens in hell. Uh-huh. And explain to me why I shouldn't stick this pitchfork in your ass for all eternity. Well, because they tricked us, you see. They told us it was about a, a virus that weaponized. Uh -huh. And why didn't you use your fucking head? <laughs> yeah. But I thought, yeah, they're in a movie. They think they're in a movie. But then I went back to this. But I'm in a movie, too. But I'm the lead. And you guys are the lead in this movie, wherever you are. If you're not taking a mask, wearing a vaccine, if you're in a, if you're in a shop and everyone around you is wearing a mask, if you live in a building where everyone you know has had three fucking jabs now, you are in a movie. And, and the only difference is you're in a lead. You're the lead role, right? So enjoy your leading role. And I'd like to say happy Christmas to all the leading actors and actresses out there. You know, because it is a weird, creepy movie. It is some days it's like Night of the Living Dead. It's like, okay, I got back here. <laughs> some weird fuckers out there. I just can't take it anymore. I just want to scream. I can't look at you. I, I, the facial recognition software that came in weeks after this COVID thing was announced. I was on. You know, I've, I've, I've done some acting. I did a few pilots, right? I, and uh, we always had to sign a release form. I give permission for this company to use my image, my voice. What the fuck is that for? You know, I went into Tesco, I asked them, I said, they rolled these things out after the COVID shit. These little iPad, they look like iPads on top of the machine. I never use those machines. I go right to the person, but I am, I'm always intrigued by, what is this new technology that we needed all of a sudden? I thought the economy was fucked. I thought the economy was fucked, because there's a diner I can't go to anymore. There's shops around here that are gone that I used to go to that were like, you know, kind of ruggedy little shops. They're gone. This 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 town's been given a, a luxury facelift, and it wants me to pay for the privilege of being insulted with ugly luxury. It's not even beautiful luxury. It's fucking ugly luxury. I can make a big white block if I have the... the uh, the mobsters in the uh, whatever uh, racket they got going as as buddies and suppliers, I could fucking make white white boxes. Can I charge half a million pounds for them? Hey, if that's the going rate, if people are that colossally stupid, and I think they are that colossally stupid, yeah, there'll be three million three million pounds worth of shit outside your window to rob your view. Close. Was that my phone? All right, I got to wrap up. Nine minutes. I want to close some themes out. Anyway, I want you to 
did I have a theme going? I had a couple threads going, didn't I? Yeah, that's the basic. Like, so, so if you're not doing this, thank you to all the leading actors and actresses. I can't imagine it. Well, who would want to be an extra? Very timid people, I guess. Timid, mousy people. Like, <laughs> come on, can I just have a little bit of the? Uh, yeah, just oh, could could I have that? Uh, could, could could I have a little bit more of that? Just a little, please. That, uh, cheers, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Timid people, people who think for themselves, have arrived at a different conclusion. Yeah, sometimes it's like Night of the Living Dead. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> so I've had to remind myself that it's Christmas, and one way I'm doing that is making a video for everybody now on the 23rd of December saying that I hope wherever you are in the world that you continue to do or not do what needs to be done or not done. You know what I mean? <laughs> Keep it on the DL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm having a good time. I, um, I'm enjoying this. I think you're going to like this album. I think I've done something, and, and it's with God's help, as I see, because all imagination, as I see, it comes from God. <clears throat> I, I've seen so much of this as just in... There was there was so much bullshit going on before with climate change and all that, but, but this was clearly a, hey, the door's closing. Who wants to get in on the stupid ship? St stupid ship is taking off. It's going to have stupid shit in it and stupid stuff. And uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, have st it's gonna pretend to care about you. It's really fake, very obviously fake and stupid, and it requires a lot of apathy. Who wants on board? We're coming, tick tock, tick tock, and they, a lot of people just jumped. So in some ways, we are, we are the left behinds, and that's why I thought Selvatico was a, a very fitting name for the type of creative work that I'm doing right now. You know, I. No, I'm not going to give it away. You'll have to hear it, and, and hopefully it'll be out in, um, it'll be out in January. Because I've already reached the halfway point. I'm aiming for a 30 minute versus the last one was 52 minutes. And I'm aiming for a 30 minute. But I needed to, you know, once I'd finished that, they, they are very exhausting. It's a very painstaking process that I, you know, I do three takes of everything. And then it's, you have to, have to fuck around, individually fuck around with the levels. But, you know, I, I get obsessed with how it sounds. And uh, it's, a, it's a very slow process. If I was just producing content... I could uh, get together with Constantine Kisson and maybe uh, Jordan Peterson and we could talk about why won't they show, uh, I don't know, Tommy Robinson leapfrogging into a bucket of custard at the ladies' luncheon. This is a war on free speech and yes, I had the vaccine, so sue me. So sue me. But you go on about... Men order, women chaos, all this. Shit. I know, but I tell you what makes me a man is I was complaining about feminism on the way to get my jab, and that's why I'm still a man. Don't don't question my Jordo. Uh, all that's so much dust and and empty. I, I it almost seems strategic though to get people to care about shit that does like you know the whole but there's migrants coming over in the boats, so. They might do a better job at running this fucking country than these psychopaths. They, they might free us. Who knows? Who fucking knows? Do you not feel like the bottom has fallen out of the world? Or is it just business as usual? Hmm. I think I'll go off and buy a condo in Vegas. Uh, it did seem a bit suspicious. They were... I mean, I happened to be a health professional and I had nothing to do. Uh, they sent me home in San Francisco and I went out and bought a condo and... Uh, well, when it came time to have the needle in my vein, I decided, uh, don't you want those pubs open again? So I can go down to the pub and I can talk about what a fucking man I am. I can go down, I can pretend to be one of the lads again. Yeah, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I, I'm still a lad. I'm still a lad. I know, I know I sold my own wife and children out. I uh, sold them right down the fucking river. Right, fucking let my, my kids be brainwashed, my children be abused by this government. This government, they wouldn't have fuck all to do with me because I'm in the working classes and they are the fucking tough classes. They wouldn't have a fucking thing to do with me. But the pubs is open again and I can sit down here and fucking talk about what a fucking lad I am and bring back fucking page three, mate. What a crock of shit. Anyway, positive message on Christmas. I got four minutes. 
to wrap this bad boy bitch up, to say, look out for Silvatico Due, which, touch wood, if they don't shut down the internet, I would say by the end of January, by the end of January. I've got, I'm on that weird roll where it's like, I'm seeing this album, I'm seeing the project everywhere I go, I know parts I want to get into, and you know, it, it's something else. W.C. Fields makes an appearance, you know, I mean, my, I, I have just, and I feel like I have, I want to go, I've always wanted this, I want to go, I've always wanted to go beyond stand-up comedy, I never liked the, how is it going, yeah, that's true. you know, it's crazy, yeah, I mean, have you seen the thing in the news, man, that I want to do something, I've always wanted to do something else, but now I think I'm going even beyond that, like, this is, I think I'm getting to something, well, it's up, it's up to the listener, obviously, to determine that, I shouldn't say, but I feel at times I... I'm getting into a Beckety type of mindset, you know. Boy, that's pretty self-important of me, isn't it? But what do you have? What do you have but your own dreams? See, I still have a soul. The soul, man. The soul. Everything seems so soulless. These are B pathways. What? I mean, they did. They did that here. They did. They, they, this. This is another thing they did in COVID times. They put out bee pathways to help the bees uh, fly better. They're fucking with nature in like major ways, whether that's raising an entire garden of weeping willow trees to accommodate pathetic little weasley little climbers. I know it did, it did seem a bit weird that, you know, that an opportunity came up to buy a half a million pound house when they said that the whole world was going to be fucking dead. But I don't know. Crazy. And it's crazy that, it, that it's so transatlantic. And I had to put the, I, wow. So you weren't you weren't sure if they were telling the truth about the health thing, but you knew they were fucking with the economy. So and that's where all your interest lies is in the economy, because I guess you're just a husk of a person. But to those of us who have soul, let us revel in it. Let us enjoy this Christmas in the soulful way it was meant to be enjoyed. You know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hosting another alternative midnight mass as I did last year. Uh, I'm going to find uh, a church, even if they're having services this year, I'm going to find a church I'm gonna, because we know what corrupt cocksuckers this, the C of E are. They, they invest in Amazon because they believe that you can affect positive change from within the boardroom. Yes, that's true. Yo, is that true? You can, you can go. Yes. You have to go in the boardroom. You have to go in the crack house to affect positive change in the crack house. Yeah, it's great, great self-justification there from the Church of England. So I'll be hosting my alternative Christmas Midnight Mass, and uh, what do I want to conclude on? I wanted, there was there was one thought I thought I left on. So thank you to all the people who have made legitimate sacrifices. Um, you know, we've all we've all paid for this in some way. Uh, those of us who've not followed along, um, and and especially thank you to those you know to those nurses and other people, other occupations where people have. No, you know, I'll live with what's, I'll live with what's just enough if I have to. I'll live with what's, what's enough. Because that's all we're guaranteed from day to day. There's an old expression. How big's your house? 17 bedrooms? How many bedrooms do you sleep in at night? One. What else do you need? Well, there is something purifying about that, but it's not very profitable. And that's what all this is really about, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's about um, everything's got to shut down. The uh, Well, there's piggy, 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 and piggy, 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 and pig, pig, piggy, 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 and they need more money. Well, they don't need it. They want it. And so uh, it's going to require you all to just uh, lay down and... <laughs> Pretty bad. What? Positive Christmas ending... Because I did tell myself, I said, this has to be a short one. Has to be a short one. Patrons at patreon.com stroke Will Franken every Sunday. This Boxing Sunday. You know, right on cue. To say thank you. Uh, my mind explodes every Sunday for them. And uh, it's, it's my way of saying thank you for keeping me alive. And uh, helping me, not only keeping me alive, but helping me to stay alive according to my principles. You know, and uh, who knows? Take that. Who knows what the council does? I don't know what the council does when they find out you're not paying the tax. You're not paying the tax. I tell you what they did do. They kept sending me a voter registration form with threats. 
Don't lose your vote. It says a weird thing. Don't lose your vote. We love you. Democracy, democracy, love, love. Don't sign up, register to be blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, and then it also comes with a threat. If you don't do this, you have to pay a fine. And I kept ignoring it. Like, who, 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 who would find somebody for not wanting to vote? When I look at, I look at Keir Starmer and see a knight. He is a knight. I see a knight in shining armor in Keir, Keir Starmer. I see a knight in shining armor in old Keir Starmer. Sure, he's a technocrat, but hey, that's where it's at. Keir, I see, I see Keir. Oh, fuck it, I'll do no, going two minutes over time here. I see Keir Starmer and I'm supposed to be encouraged. I saw the labor counselor here. You know what they did, the labor counselor here? I, I, there was a woman that was running... Uh, Diane was running for, she was right around the corner. She was running for independent counselor on an anti this agenda platform. She got a few hundred votes. Um, but, but I, I went to, uh, thank, I thanked her publicly on her, on her Facebook page. I'm ashamed to admit I've not been on Facebook in ages, months now, but, uh, whenever this election was, I did write something on her as a comment saying, well, well done for having the courage to just put it all out there. Like, this is what it's all about. You know, anything else is fucking irrelevant, you know. Building building back better, creating creating new parking for the community. Like all this bullshit, bullshit, motherfucker. Who doesn't believe that the government has the right to shut down small business? Like, you know, that's the kind of shit we want to hear, motherfucker. And uh, <laughs> she was running and... Um, this is what the labor, this is what the labor council did because I saved a tree. Uh, I did save one tree. They, they wanted to tear down a tree. Now they, they don't, they don't notify you if they want to tear down hundreds of trees to build 3 million pounds worth of shit in the environmentally protected neighborhood. But if, if every now and then they'll give a peasant one tree. So they wanted to tear down a tree. It was some lady couldn't park her car properly, you know, because there's a deadly pandemic, you know, and in a deadly pandemic, you want to have good parking really. Uh, anyway, it was irking her, the tree, and I, I wrote and saved the tree. And the labor lady, the labor counselor came down and she wanted to get a picture of me with the tree that I saved. And it was rah, 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 and evil Tory this, and, you know. And so when I brought up to her attention, you know, she had absolutely no interest in that. That Those larger projects, which involve millions of fucking pounds and, and backhanders to the council, I was like, I, 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 I. those were trees too, you know that? They were they were the they were the same, and you know what you call it? You call that a forest. But it's the same principle that saved the one fucking trees could have saved all those fucking trees. But I think there was too much money going around, wasn't there, to save all those trees? Creeps, disaster, capitalist, and and neither way does it look good for them. If there is a deadly virus, if there is a deadly virus, that's who they were ethically. And if this is a governmental takeover and not a deadly virus, that's who they are ethically. Neither one of the alternatives makes them look that good. Anyway, I wrote this thing to the lady who was running for independent counselor saying, well done. I'm really, you know, it really heartens me. A lot of us feel very lonely. It's nice to hear somebody else hasn't lost their mind, all this stuff. The labor lady jumps in on that fucking comment and says, uh, Will, we've done more to save trees. And in fact, we worked with Will and we saved a tree with Will and Will. Will and you want me to, you're, you're like a fucking schoolgirl. This, and that's what you look at Facebook and you're like that, get the fuck off this thing. The last thing I put on there was Silvatico. Like here's, you know, here's a link to the album. That's it. Get the fuck off this thing. You're supposed to leave. You, you take our fucking taxes and you act like a little fucking upset. He's talking about us on somebody else's thread. Who the fuck is running the world? All power is meaningless and arbitrary. And if you didn't feel that when this when this shit was coming down the pike and this fakery was coming down the pike, man, I say I'm much more. Um, I say that's that's what's missing for me this Christmas is that kind of like we're we're the human race and we don't take this shit. You know that's like apparently we do, apparently we do, uh, and and there's the, there's these gems of individuals and I've always I've always placed the individual supreme to the community, always, because nothing. And I guess that makes me a bit of a snowflake, you know. So for Jordan Peterson, you know, regretting the vaccine now, I'm sure I'm sure he does because he will have lost probably a lot of his audience who went to him as a go-to guy for creeping authoritarianism and realized, oh, yeah, that's right. He's a psychiatrist. He would have dished out a lot of these big pharma ideas, uh, not to mention work for the U.N. and all that. 
uh, and, and so, not to mention selling a fake idea of intellect and a fake idea of manhood and, and all this bollocks, you know, but that's, that's how they keep this shit going, isn't it? Two people in masks in Sainsbury's, an old man and an old woman, two people in masks. I'm with an earshot and I hear the lady say, well, it's all getting a bit woke now, isn't it? <laughs> And you're wearing a fucking mask. Jesus. The mind forged manacles I hear, saith Blake. Oh, fuck it, it's Christmas. How about one more cigarette? Or am I going to regret this? No, I can't regret anything now because you know why? YouTube took away the dislike function. I was wondering about that. Why, did they, why would they do that? Because that means... That means even the bad guys can't get... You know, the bad guys can't get dislikes. I imagine it's so, I, I have theories about it. Maybe I do regret it. Maybe I do regret lighting the cigarette. I should probably should just end now and stop using cigarettes as punctuation for everything. I'm going to try to knock these on the head. I am worried about my health. And when you, as the days go on, when you realize that uh, the health system is really corrupted as well, you know, if you want to stay true, and I mean, I don't, I'm, I mean, I am never putting a fucking mask on my face. That is a almost tantamount to a well, satanic symbol for me. I will never put that on my fucking face. So that means I got to look out for myself with the help of my girlfriend. <laughs> she keeps me in line. Mm -hmm. She does. She's going to make an appearance in this album. My mother, I want to make, I'll give this away. My mother, who's 78, I cannot believe this is the first time ever I've included my mother. I, made, I did a video with her after my father's, not immediately after my father's funeral, uh, about four or five days after the funeral. I was like, you want to, you want to sit down in a bit? And she didn't bat an eye. She, you know, I, th I think secretly she wanted to do it. So I called her up the other day and I, I said, look, I'm going to feed you some lines. And then you just, cause I wanted the sound of her phone voice. And I said, I'm going to feed you some lines. So my mother appears on this album and it's pretty, it's very weird. It's just, and I thought you are getting into something really insane here, you know, but I, I think what I, ca what I'm capturing so far on this album, I don't even remember what's on the first album. What, when I really, when I do something like a creative project like Sylvatico, I'll hear it over and over. I mean, just in the making of it, I'll hear it thousands of fucking times. Like some days, like you know, three words at a time, over and over, until I'm happy with those three words. Blah, you know, and uh, I don't even really remember what's on. But then once it's out, once it's released, I'll listen to it two or three times and then just leave it alone. You know, I'll be afraid. I'm always afraid to revisit it. You know, and I'm a. I don't know why. Just I'm. A, I'm a, it's not just that I'm worried about being hypercritical of myself. It's also that I'm afraid of, um, I guess, remembering what was going on at the time. If that makes any sense, you know, remembering. Oh, like that. That's that's how I felt. You know, I was. I. I don't know what I felt during Sylvatico, but I. I, I felt at least. Was well, September? No, people had been, people had taken the vaccine by then. That's still pretty recent, but I felt like I had all this comedic stuff that that was unsaid, and and I think what I'm getting at with this album is I'm getting to the um, the economic ramifications of this lie and um, the madness. Uh, the madness is fun, you know. Otherwise, you know, and I, and it's not really madness. In other words, it's uh, it's creative madness. But I have had times where it's just like, you know, I could see how a person could really slip over. As I, I think I might have mentioned this before. I've known two people that have killed themselves over the last two years. And I, I, I wouldn't doubt it had something to do with this. You know, I, I never understood suicide. Uh, I don't believe what was a Schopenhauer. The highest act of altruism is to kill yourself. You know, I'm, not, I'm definitely not of that camp. But, you know, you wonder if somebody doesn't have, doesn't have anything, if, if they're already on the verge anyway, and then some shit like this comes along and, you know, they, they top themselves, you know. So I've known, I've known two suicides and 
<clears throat> yeah, you do, you do, you, I don't know, it does make you think, doesn't it? I would never do it, but I attribute those, um, those deaths to this nightmare. It's hard not to, just like my uncle, my uncle's life probably could have been saved, but he, he died waiting for a cancer operation that was pushed back indefinitely for a COVID onslaught that never came out in podunk, small town, Missouri. Yeah. So it's hard to see those cute little masks. You go, you know, it's, it's hard to really feel Christmassy, I guess. And that's why I'm glad I've got my girlfriend. I'm grateful for my girlfriend. I'm grateful for all of you out there, wherever you are in the world that aren't uh, following along with us. I'm very grateful for my patrons. Uh, for allowing me to remain free and me. <laughs> That's the name of my new book. It's called 10 Easy 12 Steps to Get You From... What the fuck did I just say? From free... I'm, fr I'm free to be me. I'm the me I was meant to be because I'm free. Me, 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 me. <laughs> and then they all started speaking the same language. Me, 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 me. Maybe all of these fuckers will go into the metaverse and they'll all die. They'll go into this, Frank, uh, what's his name? The kid, Zuckerberg. They'll go into Zuckerberg's metaverse and they'll all die because they'll think they'll, they're eating real food, but it's virtual food and they'll just, they'll just starve themselves to death. I think it's gotten that bad. I think people, I think people really do think other people are on a screen. They're not able to, like, I'll ask people, you know, aside from, aside from what something on your hand is telling you or a screen is telling you, what proof do you have that we're living in a deadly pandemic? That's it. Some stranger that may, that may not even really be real is telling you this and you're behaving like this. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And then I know there's nothing I can really do about it. I can put the seeds, I can just drop a little seed of truth in there and see if it takes hold. But when you've been fishing a long time, you ain't caught no fish after a while, you say, I'm going to put that pole up. I'm going to put that pole up and get a cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? That's a motherfucker. That's right. That's right. I'm going to put this bad boy out. I, I've done too much time already. I got. I have a uh, recording to do today. And then I'm knocking off for three days to celebrate uh, Buon Natale. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Italian for Christmas. Learning Italian. I've got an Italian friend I talk to every Tuesday. And he's giving me lessons, and uh, we're discussing philosophers like Giancarlo Leopardi, a pessimist. Uh, I'm gonna have to read to Mazzoni because I like. I hear he's an optimist. Uh, I'll try this. I'll do a little poem for you to get, to try my pronunciation. Now, my friend Lorenzo has told me that my pronunciation is getting better, but I need, I need to work on my prosody, prosody, because I don't really know the words immediately it's not like sight reading music yet yet because i am stubborn i give myself an italian lesson every morning and every night before i go to bed did i really want to do this which one do i want to do i don't want to just jump into something at uh, at random well here's an easy one trenta giorni anno settembre april junio e poi novembre Diventato ce ne uno, le altre sette ne hanno trentuno. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's traditional, yes, yes. We also have saying in Italy, uh, if, uh, do I come to where you work and slap the dick out of your mouth? You said it's too. Yeah, do I come to where? All right. Tanto gentile. Tanto gentile. This is a, Dante, a, a poem from Dante's uh, La Vita Nuova. And that was the, when I got this at a boot sale. Uh, this was I went to a boot sale that was to raise funds to fight the council's plans to mow down all of Prince's Parade in Kent and build essentially a smart city there. And um, I, I pitched to them. I said, "What about not paying council tax?" Oh well, they come and get you. I know you have to. You have to, that, that's that's what a fight is. You have to take a risk. You have to make a. You know, I'm not saying that will work. I'm saying it, it's just a damn sight better than having bake sales. 
and then and then the police were very courteous to us the police the police let us stand on that side of the bulldozer and they were very nice the police were very nice and these weren't the ones that killed sarah everard no these were the nice police and they said stand on that side of the bulldozer and you can sh and we were, we were allowed to shout at the billboard sign it was very lovely very it's always respectful all around and that's what we need i think we need respect more than ever you know, I'm not saying I believe in the vaccine. I'm not saying I don't believe in the vaccine. I think we should just have a discussion about the vaccine, says the culture warrior. It's all about the discussion because the discussion costs a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds to come in and discuss whether or not fascism is good. Yes, that that's our racket. We stole freedom and we and we were selling it back to you in the guise of a culture war. Okay, so this is, uh, so I bought this book at the uh, Practical Italian Grammar because, you know, I thought, why not learn another language? I had two years of German, two years of Russian years ago, and if you don't continue speaking those languages, got to give that to the neighbors, if you don't continue speaking the languages, you forget them. But basically, I picked this up because of Milton's connection with Italian. He'd, uh, he had written poems in Italian. He had many Italian friends on his uh, travels there. And no doubt uh, Dante informed a lot of what he would come to write about in, in Paradise Lost, I think, in his own way. So the plan initially was to learn enough to be able to understand Milton's Italian poems as well as other Italian poets. And now it's become something much more... You know, it's, it's something I really love doing. I, I love the sound of it. So, I wonder, is this the one I want to read on Christmas? I don't have a Christmas poem, I don't think. I could do, uh, well, Ave Maria. Ave Maria, piena di grazia, eletta fra le spose e le vagene sei tu. Sia benedetto il frutto, o benedetta, di tua materne vescere, Gesù. Prega per chi adorando e te si prostra. Prega per il peccatore, per l'innocente, e per il debole oppresso, e per il possente, misero anch'esso, tua pietà dimostra. Prega per chi sotto la trage o pieggia, la fronte è satta la mavaggia o sorta. Per noi a tu prega, sempre nell'ora della morte nostra. Ave Maria, nell'ora della morte. Amen. My friend Lorenzo is very big into Carmela Bene, and uh, he's been having me watch uh, some of those. And, and what I like about Bene, one of the things about Bene is we, we watched him recently reading Leopardi, and, and I said for that 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 the myth that all Italians speak very fast and you know is is not always true. He read this poem so slowly, and it was like if you really want to know pronunciation, actually Bene is experimental as he is. Is, is, is a really good starting point in places because he really grabs hold of each word. Each, uh, ogni parola, ogni parola. So, tento gentile, uh, how gentle and how honest seems my woman when she greets uh, that every tongue... <laughs> trembles uh and the eyes see i'm not using google translate I'm, I'm actually going by this book and my friend lorenzo i refuse to use google translate hi google google heard you need help i'm more with this out old school i'm more with this out old school and the eyes something of to to see the humble vest, uh, the humble vest vestige, and seems that she is a thing of heaven on earth, a miracle to show. Okay, so you know, if you've got a loved one somewhere out there, take a Beatrice, Dante and Beatrice. I'll do this for you, and then I'll, I'll say goodbye because i got to get the food on. i got stuff to do because it is Christmas in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? i got... Uh, should I tell you where I got my missus? No, I won't tell you where I got my missus. i got her a couple things, and uh, and I uh, hope she enjoys them. But they're all small in size. And I, I'm, I'm, I've been... I, 
I, I realized I'm going to give her a bunch of small things, and I thought, did I not, you know, should there be variations in shapes? Anyway, I've got stuff to do, so I'll leave you with this and just say happy Christmas. Thank you to the patrons, uh, and thank you to all of you who are not following along with this and still have a soul and realize the important things in life are not necessarily acquisition in times of desperation. Hey, there's an earthquake in Haiti. Time to swoop down and get some uh, to those who are taking risks and um, standing your ground on things. Uh, God bless you. And a very happy new year and a very happy Christmas. Tanto gentile. Tanto gentile e tanto oneste pare. La donna mia quando è l'altro e saluta. Con il lingua de van tromando muta. E le occhi, lo non, e le occhi non la descande guardare. E la si va sentendosi la dare. Benignamente d'umiltà vestuta. E par che sia una cosa venuta di cielo intera a miracolo mostrare. Mostrarsi si piacente a chi la mira, che dà per le occhi una dolcezza al cuore, che intendo non la puoi, chi non la prova. E par che della sua labbia si muova un spirito soave pieno d'amore, che va decendo all'anima, sospira. God bless each and every one of you. Good night.